great when and if it does not contend for economic empowerment and you want to listen to what i have to say here i said here no nation can be economically emancipated with a dependency mentality no nation can be economically emancipated with a dependency mentality what does that mean depending on government depending on luck depending on superstition for your economic emancipation many people in africa and nigeria can i tell you and and i say this with every sense of responsibility believing that the government of any nation including nigeria will be responsible for your economic empowerment is a joke i don't care what government is in power what political party you study from a standpoint of leadership and economics there is no great nation that became great through government every great nation is empowered economically through its private sector every great nation is private sector driven the assignment of government is not to make you rich is to create an enabling environment where all kinds of healthy activities leading towards the growth of that nation happens a dependency mentality will destroy africa when i was teaching about inheritance here i taught you that there are many young men who have failed with their lives and they have refused to make efforts to be great they are waiting and even praying for their parents to die because they found out that there's some land somewhere in Maitama and that that land is 150 million and the gentleman has been praying wouldn't this man die I had the other day he has high blood pressure and he's saying he has recovered do you know that in many circles in Africa once people die it's not even the burial that is the issue the arguments that start from day one as if everybody was praying and hoping for the person to die I made up my mind right from when I was way younger than this that in the name of Jesus I would never live my life trying to say oh let my parents have the tea and bread and so that you and what kind of a life is that and let me tell you something it is a cause to let your children start from the ground not with what you are hearing make up your mind that my children will never have to start from the ground again no matter the price I have to pay it is selfish to make decisions today that you do not think of the consequences to your children and your children's children. Tonight's teaching is hard, but just enjoy it. You will tell me thank you. In the name of Jesus, happy independence. Yes, sir. This is what love can do. Insist that you must be transformed. Someone is listening to me now who needs this message. Perhaps some politician somewhere listening to me who needs this message. Don't, don't carry sirens and move around with no productivity. No, do you know? Hate poverty as a revelation. Don't like poverty. It will destroy you. It will make you a slave. This is not about prosperity. I've taught you. There is a balanced communication. I will never be poor. My children will never be poor. Koinonia will never be poor. Under my watch, you will never be poor. I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. You must also be economically vibrant. A nation that is not economically emancipated will remain slaves and will transfer that slavery to the children with all due respect there are for many of you who are widely traveled there are places that when you go to and you show a green passport be prepared for embarrassment just start saying in the name of jesus the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience because of the kind of embarrassment you will receive there everybody begins to suspect you what is in your bag open it let us check it turn around turn around again turn around the third time simply because in our lifetime we will change it in the name of jesus christ there is a nigeria that is imagined that in the name of jesus your the passport that you hold hallelujah Abba. Just because you were born in Nigeria, embarrassment everywhere around the airport. No, you must obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. 
and I say this by the power that raised Christ from the dead God is raising a people are you hearing what I'm saying God is raising a people this is why there are ambassadors that will redeem the image of Nigeria here I'm saying it prophetically God is raising us all as ambassadors that someone will look at you and say before I met you I've had a bad image about Nigeria but no more no more no more I, I i usually would not give nigerians job but when i listen to your message i made up my mind that my company will leave a quota for 1000 nigerians we need to redefine the image of this nation redefine the narrative not everybody is a thief not everybody is a crook not everybody is corrupt not everybody is yahoo not everybody is 419 there are people today as a young man when you are empowered economically people just look at you and say Kai, this guy this kind of money who knows maybe you are a ritual killer there are ambassadors that god is sending i'm telling you this and you are part of these ambassadors you must believe it that because of your presence and what you stand for kings and ambassadors embassies will say anytime you need any come through me once you bring somebody through me they will stamp their visa because i trust you i hope you know that integrity is capital there are people today who have not been able to go and see their families for four or five years because they just suspect that perhaps they are going to do drugs i have prayed for many people nigeria 63 years 60 years as a federal republic 109 years from our amalgamation we have come of age we need to start redeeming the image of this nation running away is not how to redeem the image we will stay and clean it up we will first take responsibility now there's nothing wrong in traveling if that is your destiny but some of us have chosen that in our lifetime we will see the new nigeria hallelujah that someone hands over something and is trying to bribe you and you hold both the hand and the money and say I don't condemn you but let me show you a lesson not every Nigerian is corrupt you did this I bless you put your money back and learn the lesson there are people in this nation who fear God God bless you leave my office once you do that the person goes back with an orientation not everybody is a thief i repeat not every man of god is a crook not everybody collected power from from a, um, um what, what do they call it now those who whoever it is what shrine that gives power don't generalize it there's a very negative image people have to the point that you see people their green passport they now carry a black cover and cover anything that can cover so that no we are proud nigerians we are not ashamed listen listen to me there is a nigeria that is rising and government alone cannot do it this is where the emergence of saviors the bible says saviors shall arise from zion and they shall judge the mount of esau hallelujah and we thank God for the little contribution that God is helping us to make. As we travel around the nations, we are not just going as preachers. We are going as ambassadors, first of the kingdom, but also restoring the image of this nation. Nigeria has great people. I know that there are Nigerians doing drugs around the world, but not everybody is a drug baron. There are people who fear God. Not everybody's one naira came from occultism. No. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. I remember one of us here when he came and showed me the blueprint for the leadership university he's setting up in this nation. I was happy and excited. I said, that's right. That's right. 
and then economic empowerment I have seen what poverty can do to a family our children that are prostituting do you go and be a prostitute with a poor man how much will he give you remember our Delilah story when you are economically incapacitated I am telling you listen do not let your child look at you one day and say daddy I love you but may I never be like you mommy I love you but may I never be like you you are the reason for my pain I have a past today I'm ashamed to tell people and it was because of your irresponsibility when Kofi Annan was UN Secretary General he made a statement that I want to make reference to it was during Children's Day he came up and he said let our children not suffer the consequences of our carelessness as for me I've made up my mind to be economically empowered for myself and for the work of the kingdom if you don't believe in it save Johnny may your revelation bail you out when you are in the lion's den but as for me I have made up my mind I know what it means to be in a realm of lack and incapacitation and I know what it means to have the privilege to be able to be a blessing the choice is yours but as far as I'm alive and as far as I have the privilege of leading this ministry I can tell you nobody will climb this altar to advocate poverty no if poverty were good some of it would be in the presence of God because everything in his presence reflects glory among the many things mentioned in his presence we do not see poverty there Africa has embraced a theology that has brought look at many of our young men now you see it's easy to condemn these guys and say oh they are into yahoo they are into prostitution most times we address the symptoms and we don't go to the root everybody wants to have a sense of destiny did you hear what I said? Every young man wants to get to a point in his life where he knows, I have taught you six fundamental needs of every man. Number one, security. Number two, variety. Number three, love and acceptance. Number four, significance. Number five, growth. Number six, impact and contribution. And every time people feel left out of life and destiny, they will invent any formula. All this talk we are saying, stop your who and stop I will never never promote all those demonic things but I'm saying we are addressing symptoms by the time a lady is watching her mother die and she needs 9.5 million naira to go and send her to India for treatment in the presence of pain anything looks like an option to be considered are we together let me challenge anybody here if you don't have a job start working on yourself don't sit down and say the government is not giving me a job the government cannot employ everybody let me just tell you the truth it does not matter what government is in power the government cannot give everybody a job and corporations right now want to maximize profit so if they can downsize 50 people and bring in IT apps and all kinds of technological advantages to increase the, don't blame them we need innovation we need intelligence we need to sell the idea of productivity and investment two things that the young people must learn in Nigeria the power and the value of productivity I am gifted is not productivity productivity I am a graduate is not productivity are we together I met a woman in Lagos. I've shared the story here. This woman got into White House and all her business is to sell, we call it in Nigeria, bean cake, moi moi. That's what took her to the White House. She's met the who and who's of the nations because of that. What God has placed in your hand, if you can take it serious, why should I believe in something you don't even believe in yourself? There are people today who have built houses frying akara. I know you laugh at them. They package it well and what you will buy for 100 naira, you now buy for 3,000 because they gave it value. That's what productivity is. There are people here, the 2 million naira you wasted, you can use it to dig a, a borehole and start a bottled water company. The resources you need are there. Water will never, never, based on the Maslow theory of needs, the hierarchy of needs, it will be an eternal demand. 
let's wake up as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ the church is supposed to help society we are not a burden to Nigeria we are contributors to the health and the strength of nation of nations hallelujah reject laziness that when you come to church you are supposed to be taught like this and then grace is released over you but when that grace is released over you you now go back and put that to work try it and fail it is more honorable to fail in dignity and diligence than to sit down waiting for someone to give you money apostle i want to do it but i did my calculation i need somebody to give me 10 million you are joking you think the world is that free 10 million out of nowhere now if i were not a preacher if i were not a preacher i would never sit down and watch myself in poverty and lack no that anything my hands finds provided is pro scripture and it does not destroy lives it does not destroy properties with all humility i gave you an i think i don't know if i said it here someone i was going to add you know to my security men and then one of them came a fine young man i didn't know he was a graduate true story when this gentleman came i looked at him i said no 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 tell me about yourself he said I'm a graduate it's just that I didn't have the opportunity to get a job so I decided that instead of sitting idle let me go and be trained and I said wow this is serious I now told him and I'm saying it with all humility not just to brag I told him I said my friend because you did this as a graduate instead of going to steal I'm going to send you to go and do your masters and I will give you money to start business you will not be a security in my house now listen that gentleman today has gone but because he was humble enough the arrogance of this generation in the midst of nothing you get a job of 50,000 you say 50,000 Abuja, God forbid if it's not 500,000 and God says you are not ready to rise you are not ready to rise oh my birthday I need 500,000 as a budget no economic empowerment when you wear tomorrow's cloth today, you will be naked tomorrow. When you eat tomorrow's food today, can I tell you the truth? Please listen. For those of us that God has started placing something in our hand, run away. One of the things I learned with all due respect in this city is that God needs to deliver this city from a fake life. Everybody wants to show we have arrived. If you are not there, you are not there. Just sit down and grow patiently. You see someone in a restaurant eating, 200,000 and that's all the person has in his account and everybody in that place is not your age mate economically it's a message by God flying business class without a job getting into a choice hotel and celebrating birthdays gathering friends together burning one two million no the church is the right place to say this and I'm saying this from a standpoint of love can I tell you, delete wasters from your life. People who are not there when you have money, as soon as money arrives, it's as if there's a spirit that makes them know. Here they come. Tell them I love you, but I listen to apostle and I'm on a journey with determination. Are we together now? Yes. I was going to assist a gentleman one time to marry and then he, the, 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 among the budget, he brought a budget for honeymoon. I said, you are joking. Joking. You, are, you are joking you think just because a man of God is a giver we are foolish no you are joking hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I hope you get what I'm trying to say there are people today, if you say you want to help them start out in life, what kind of car will I buy? They will tell you a Jeep. First car. There is an orientation we must, we must trust God for grace. Some of you, even though you are making it remain in that one room, cut your course and keep growing and building so that when you come out of that one room, you don't return back in shame. Are we together now? say all my colleagues have gone no problem 
you start with the dignity of integrity. What can you do with your hand? I will be more than glad to pray and bless you. And perhaps even so into your life, provided you are serious. Let's, let's, let's not train lazy and irresponsible people in church. And then we keep gathering everything and saying in Jesus name. No. I challenge every young man here. Listen, gentlemen. For the ladies, God bless you, work hard. But for the men, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release grace upon you to be productive. No gentleman in this ministry should have a dependency mentality. No. And if you are here and it's your wife that is feeding you, well, it depends on the situation. But if it's more than three months, four months, you are not serious. You are not serious. Did you hear what I said? I'm not being stupid. You are not serious. There is a grace called favor. Wake up in the name of Jesus Christ and take responsibility. Don't fold your hand and allow your wife pay children's school fees, bring food for you, do a pay rent for you, buy clothes for you. Who paid whose dowry? We'll wrap up soon. But you must hear what I have to say. In the name of Jesus Christ. Save money. You don't have to go for every wedding, every birthday party. Be responsible. Instead of spending 100,000, send 20,000 as your seed and watch online. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are parts of clubs and societies that the devil is using as loopholes to destroy our finances. It's not that God has not been faithful, but many of us, this society life, I want to show that I belong. If you are not there, you are not there. You will be there, you can be there. But for God's sake, sit down and grow gradually. Don't get into a house that for the whole year you are palpitating because the rent is not there. Why give yourself that kind of burden? Economic empowerment. Obtain grace. Every gentleman here, I repeat, and Koinonia Global, wherever you are, I'm going to pray for you at the end of this meeting. Let something come upon you. Go back, some of you this night, when you go back home, don't just go and sleep. Get a clean sheet of paper and sit down and say, my destiny, I'm st I will stop being a child from today. You can, if you are staying with your mother, mommy, daddy, thank you. Give me the next one year and I'll go out of your house with nobility. Apostle challenged me in church today. I will not go out to play football up morning till night when I don't have the destiny of a sportsman. I can go and visit. I will play it as leisure when I prosper. But for now, I will hang my boots and sit down. Father, give me an idea. Breathe upon me. Play this song. Play it till creativity comes upon your spirit. And the Lord can speak to you and say, you know what? You have grace for clothes. Start selling clothes. And someone will call you and say, you know what? There is a store that I'm opening. Can you come and help us? He who is faithful in little. One day you will become a store owner across the globe. Let nothing be too small, provided it is proscripture and it will help you live a life of dignity. It's better to soak Gary with honor. Are we together now? And to go and eat in the table of unbelievers because you are trying to hurry life. I know that some of you see what God has done in our lives today. This is the reason why sometimes we tell our stories. So that people don't think that you were sitting down and someone just gave you one billion and empowered you. It's a lie. Well, maybe it happens so for other men of God. But ladies and gentlemen, there are times God himself delays your growth for the sake of those you will be training. So that you can have a story to tell people. What is around you does not define you. Koinonia, I was holding miracle services and I was using a bike. It was not because of luck. God would not allow me buy a vehicle. My suit was more expensive than the bike I was climbing. You can imagine a crowd of people and here I come with a bike. And I remember warning our protocol department. I said, never inconvenience anybody to try to get their car to come and pick me. If I want to buy a car, there's no car I will not buy. This is an instruction. I wondered for many years why God would make me go through that kind of thing. 
One day God told me, I want the people learning from your life to know that greatness is not just defined by the things around you. Today you can hear that maybe someone gave a house, someone bought this and you say, ah, they are lucky. Me too, I will go and preach. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe So ladies and gentlemen, I will be more than willing to pray for you if you are willing to be serious. Some of you, your loved ones have been trying to tell you to be serious. Now God has used this preacher. I've told you that me, I'm both old and new school. Work hard. Be diligent. If someone gives you money, thank God for it and keep it quietly and then keep walking. Keep walking. Lord, I obtain grace. I will farm. I obtain grace. I will buy a deep freezer and start selling drinks. I will start selling drinks. Let the anointing of the Spirit come upon it. One day someone will see you and say, really, I want to, I will buy a franchise for you of an eatery or another company. Number seven, how nations become great. Great. 